Hey, welcome today. I have a special guest with me. Susan Bell is here. I am so excited that she is here. But before I talk to her, I just want to start with some music. So Susan, play something for us. All right. I know that you have the YouTube videos and we'll get into that later, but to hear a composer play her own music is just a thrill, you know, that way we know what you thought it was supposed to sound like. So again, help me welcome Susan Bell. She's a piano teacher. She is a composer. We're so grateful for that. She's a church musician and much, much more. We have a lot of her bio in the description below and a lot of other good links and stuff. So um, if you want all the things, it's gonna be there. Just, just find it in the description. Okay, cool. Now, this is gonna be fun because we're gonna talk about Susan and who she is, and then we're going to preview some Halloween and fall music. So please hang tight because I've heard there may be a freebie and you will want it because it will be way worth it. So just hang tight with us. So I really don't remember Susan when I first heard about you, but I, I know you started on Sheet Music Plus in what year? To, uh, October of 2019. Okay. So almost, yeah. three, almost three years now. Yeah. It, it's been a lot. So I know that it was probably maybe sometime in 2020, I started just seeing you on Facebook. And I bought one of your pieces and then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, this is somebody special and I can connect with how she writes because it's very pedagogically sound. It just, you think like I think about it, like a teacher and, yes. and there's no big surprises. When you say it's intermediate, there's nothing weird in there that we're going to be thrown for a loop. So. I was just following you along and we were chatting back and forth on email and then I got to meet her in person. <laughs> we did a piano teachers retreat in March and we met up in Waco and so Susan and her husband came and showed up and we just had a blast getting to pick her brain and talk about her. So when we were at that lunch, one of the things that fascinated me was your typical work day. But can you tell us the good, the bad, and the ugly? I mean, what is it really like to be Susan Bell and wake up to that alarm? Well, I don't wake up to alarm because I have four cats and they go, meow, because they're hungry. <laughs> um, yeah, usually I'm a morning person. So I like to get up about 6, 6.30 or so and feed the cats, take care of business. But um, I love to come in here to my computer uh, because I pretty much think about music 24 seven. Um, I come in, I'm either writing or I'm marketing or I'm uh, researching. Um, I, I do everything myself from every composition you see. I've thought of the idea. I've done all of the practicing. I've done the editing. I've done the re professional recording of it. I make my own videos and then I have to market it myself. Um, so yeah, I pretty much think about music and every aspect of it all the time. And then I have a full teaching studio. I have 32 students a week. And so I teach five days a week, 3.30 to 7.30. 
Um, and, you know, we're planning Halloween recitals right now and we're going to do Christmas recitals. And I knew this year I'm trying to add some ensembles. So I'm planning that kind of music. So, yeah, pretty much, you know, my son's out of the house. My husband works, uh, you know, I this is what I do all the time. <laughs> so you finish at 730 and then and then you have dinner and then. You kind of wind down for the night pretty much and then yeah yeah i'm like i said i'm up at six and so by the time nine o'clock hits i am toast um i love to watch tv you know like we like sci-fi or we like british mysteries or we just kick back and watch tv and and relax <laughs> now do you ever like wake up in the night with a tune in your head or something yeah, um, when I'm working on a song, it won't leave me alone. Like right now, I'm working on this uh, Joy to the World. Uh, we're just supposed to tell you that. No, that's so, okay. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I'll wake up and I'm hearing the little motives. You talked about how my music is very pedagogical. I love patterns. Students love patterns. They can really latch onto those patterns. So I've got a little pattern going in this uh, Joy to the World that won't stop. I mean, just keeps playing over and over until I, when I finish a song and I feel like it's out the door, it leaves me alone. It's, it's really funny. So, so I'm done with it. I can let it go and, and go off into the world and have a nice life. And, and then I start the next project. So yeah, I, I, I have a hard time sleeping. <laughs> I would think so. I mean, that has happened to me many times where I just wake up and either a tune that comes to me or Maybe it's even someone else's tune that I'm working on. It's just, you know, it's in my head and you, you have to do something to get rid of it. You know, <laughs> that earworm in your head, it's yes. a blessing, but it's also a curse when you're trying to sleep. Yeah. Um, but I do have to ask you this, this extra kind of question. So you seem to have a lot going on. Are you working on multiple things at the same time, or do you just start with one thing and finish it? Well, um timing doesn't usually let me do that usually i've got several things going at the same time because like this uh silent uh joy to the world i'm working on um i want to give it my best shot so i kind of think about it i work on it and i take a day off and then i come back and say oh does it really sound good um some things i i quickly rip off and get through out the door one day i did an arrangement of remember me from coco um, and I did that in five hours. I think that's a record of, of start to finish on a piece. You know, I, I did re cause I always research anytime I do an arrangement, I look at what do other people have. And I certainly don't want to do anything like they did it because they've already done it and they're much better than me. So I want to do a different take. So I listened to the, the video of, from the movie. I found some other sheet music examples. And then I kind of walked, took a walk and thought about it. And then I sat down to the piano and played it. And I was able to write it, edit it, engrave it, record it. And I didn't make much of a video, but I did all that in five hours. And that's a record for me. So, wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I just have to ask you then, like, I know that you have a background in band and choir and handbells, um, piano ensembles. What seems to make you come back to writing for the piano? Um, well, I've been playing the piano since I was six and I'm almost 60 now. So that's that's a long time. Uh, you know, and it's been in my life always. I never left the piano. Band came into my life in junior high. I had a lot of teachers that were really important and and help me find my feet footing in music but uh I've been a piano teacher for 35 years and I love my piano students and I just it has such a wonderful voice and it just feels right it's under my fingers and I just I dream about it I mean it just the piano is just who I am so you're like our modern day Chopin in a way <laughs> I mean although you have written for a lot of other other maybe more than Chopin did but uh, but I love that there's kind of a poetry between you and the piano in that way and you know if that's your calling and that's your gifting and and how you can express yourself we are all just fortunate to be on the other other end to be able to um to have that that music so like I mentioned you know when I saw your music it looks great when I see it on the page I mean I, as a teacher, I can look at it and I can say, I know what she's doing. Mm -hmm. It, it feels good under the fingers and it sounds good. 
and it makes sense. Um, so we'll talk about that more when we get into the fall music, because I have, I don't know, I have a few just tiny bit of observations about how I view these different Halloween pieces, like when I look at them and I'm looking to assign them to someone, mm-hmm. I, you know, thought I'd just share what goes, goes on in my yeah. head. Yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, you write for piano, but you were a band director. <laughs> so what other instrument did you play growing up? Yeah, so I started the piano when I was six, and when uh, junior high came along, a lot of my friends were going to be in band, and I I wanted to be in band because it was music. I'm all about music, and I was singing in choir at the church, and I sang in choir in elementary, and so I wanted to be in band, and my family was like, oh, I don't know if we have time for band. You know, I was riding horses at the t- at also, and I did a lot of activities Girl Scouts and stuff. Anyway, my cousin graduated from high school and the family said, well, if you want to be in band, we got a clarinet and you can play that. So that's how I started. Funny story. That's how the same thing happened to my grandmother. You know, she was a pianist and she went into the band and they said, hey, we have a clarinet. You can play that. And so it's kind of funny, the parallel there. But yeah, and I I was in band very uh, heavily and I was an all-state clarinet player in my junior year of high school and went on to college and got my music ed degree. Um, I was a piano major, but I was still playing in the band. And so my teaching certificate is band focused. Mm. And then after that, I went to UT Austin to get my composition degree. And those pianists are so good there. I said, I play the clarinet. And so I was third chair in the wind ensemble. And and that was my, clarinet was my instrument there anyway. And then after that, I went to be a band director for a while. So I'm, I'm pretty deep into band community too, so. That's cool. And all I love that journey, how it just led you, the gift of the clarinet. Yes. <laughs> family member. Yeah. Led you all the way into the first part of your career. Yeah. And and then you transitioned into a lot of different things. But how did all of that band director journey lead you to your piano studio? Well, uh, I think it, it it was my husband. We got married and then he was in the Navy for 30 years. So every time we moved there was just something needed at the different base wherever we live. So I taught band and then we started moving around and then I was a choir director and then I was a handbell director just because the base we moved to, they didn't have anybody that could do that. So when we moved to uh, Japan, actually, there were not very many piano teachers on bass. And so I, boom, I, I, I had 32 students a week, you know, cause I was the one and only. <laughs> That is so cool. You know, I've experienced that myself. My husband is a pastor. We've moved around and we just reinvent ourselves. Um, And I've recently reinvented myself because we moved three months ago and I just took everybody online and it's been fantastic. So I think as a as a musician, if you're flexible, it actually gives you a lot of opportunity to it may stretch. It certainly has stretched me but it it stretches us, but we become better musicians and people for that flexibility. So um, I got to ask, and I think I know the answer. What is your most popular piano piece? Ah, (laughs) I have to go with Funky Gecko. I have heard so many Facebook kids play this. It's just a delight. Yeah, that is, that is so cool. And, you know, looking at you on Facebook, you really seem to be a success. You've gone through all these iterations. You've started marketing your music. But can you tell us if there was a time it was especially hard? Uh, That's a really good question. And I think it ties into what you just said, when you have to move around and reinvent yourself. Um, Every time we moved, I had to reinvent myself, try to find a place to fit in, a place to, to serve. And um, our our hardest move was in 2012. We were living in Northern Virginia. My husband retired from the Navy. Our son graduated from high school and we left the area. And so I'm a Texas girl, born and raised in Corpus. I wanted to come home to Texas. And so my husband found a job in San Antonio area where we are now. Um, But 
it involved a lot of travel. So he, he was gone. He got on a plane Monday. He got home Friday. I, at the time, was caring for my elderly mother. Um, she was 90 at the time. And for the last five years of her life, I was her caregiver. I took her to doctors. And, you know, so we I moved her up to Virginia to be close to us. I moved her back to Texas with us. My son's gone off to college. We have two dogs, two cats. I don't know anybody. I don't have any teaching students. You know, I don't have any military friends to hang with. I don't have any church members to, to, you know, the first three years here were very hard. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't writing, you know, I was just lost trying to take care of my mother, you know, and that's very hard. So yeah, I, I was struggling. And after she passed, I kind of felt like it's finally time for me to, to explore what are my passions? What are my interests? And I always wanted to write music. Um, of course, I love to teach. So I just, filled up my studio with students and then we got involved in a church that really we were a good fit and so um it was hard networking is is difficult but you have to work at it to to f make a fulfilling life i think yeah that is a great story you know there's a, there's a lot of points in there where i think a lot of us can relate um and as an adult when you move and you don't have a child mm -hmm and their, their activities, it is really hard to meet people and make friends and get a network. And in our instant world, we just think it's gonna happen like that, but it takes years, it really does. Mm -hmm. And um, now it's been, it's flourished because you planted those seeds and, and you've got that wonderful network and it led you mm -hmm. to where you are today. So that's cool. All right, if you've made it this far in the video, you are really in for a treat because Susan is going to preview some of her fall pieces for us. So I want you, if you've made it this far, you should be excited. <laughs> Type the word music, M-U-S-I-C, in the comments. Let me know if you are a teacher, a student, or a parent. I want to know about you YouTube people and if you see this on Facebook, you can do the same thing. I want to know where you are and, and, and uh, what you need. So type music and then tell us teacher, student, parent, and that will help us as we plan for the future. So we're ready for music. What do you have for us first? Well, I thought I'd start with something's in the attic. I know this is one that you are that you like. Um, I I had never done a Halloween recital before. And I saw on Facebook that a lot of the teachers were really excited about that. And I did my first Halloween recital last year. It was a huge hit. The kids wore costumes and they just had a blast. So this was written for that occasion. And it's for elementary students. Actually, as I've thought about it, it and um, it actually it would be great in an elementary music class too because it's a story yeah. it's a little long you know for most students we when we play it in our in our studio we usually only play one or two verses i wrote it for five verses because it's a story of a child going up into seeing what's in the attic and it's told through the five senses because you know i know you love to to work with young children and um they're learning high and low and left right and left and loud and soft and all of these things well we're also learning things through our senses you know we've got to look we've got to listen we taste we feel and we smell and so that's why there's five verses and anyway it's just cute as a bug you can play it just as a solo you can play it with the teacher duet you can just play it with a backing track and sing it. The last page has all the lyrics. If the kids just want to sing it um, on the first page, I've got some teacher's notes in this song. We're learning tone clusters, which what kid doesn't love to bang on the piano? You know, they get to, you know, they get to do this kind of a scary sound. And so anyway, uh, there's a ton of information in this one, but that's a cute little one that we, and you can sing along. If you watch my YouTube, I actually sing it, you know. Yeah. And before I, I'm going to ask you to play just a little bit of it, but okay. um, what I like about it, it's an A minor. D and, minor. Oh, e, e minor, sorry. But there's only like a little bit of black keys in it. So it, it follows 
just pretty easy on the keys. And um, anyway, before you start playing the piece, there's a little bit of glitch with my Zoom here. Just play a little like E minor scale or whatever, like five, and then your piano will start picking up and then we'll hear you. Okay, yeah, this is in D minor and uh, it's that way we don't have any black keys except if we have an accidental, you know, a, of a G sharp in there and then some things. So anyway, you want me to sing it too? Sure, yeah. D just, minor, my key signatures are off today, but yes, yeah. D minor. Right, right. So the, the elementary solo. Creepy, spooky, something's in the attic. What can it be? Step, step, step. Should we look and see? Same thing, but left hand. Creepy, spooky. the little refrain and then you have the verses and then we follow up with the refrain again so it's real simple but we get to do some fun techniques we're using the whole keyboard and and it's easy and it's it's just fun it kind of strikes me i don't know how you feel about this but it teachers that do rote teaching mm. could just buy a copy of this piece and for kids who can't read it, the pre-reading kids, even they could just teach them the first part. Exactly. And, and that's why I put the, the lyrics in the back. Just they could play, they could just play that part by rote. They could sing it. They could act out the verses because there's a lot of words there, but they could listen to it and they get it because it talks about knocking on the door. And uh, you know, I, I, I have to say in the verses, you know, I told you it's look, listen, taste, feel, and smell. The fifth verse, we're going to talk about farts. Uh, <laughs> I have a boy, you know, and it's, uh, what's that smell? Was it gas? Do you smell it too? Little tiny toots. Uh, bad toots. <laughs> I don't like that smell. So I, I debated whether to talk about that, but I said, you know, there's going to be some boys out there. They're going to eat that up. So they do <laughs> this. I can't tell you a lot of my students last fall wanted to play this. And yeah. for my Halloween recital, I had it outdoors. I've done that for years pre COVID. I just put a piano on my porch and we play either trick or treat night or last year we did it just in the morning and they wore their costumes and i don't know i had three or four kids who wanted to play it and i thought you know if they like it i don't care how many kids want to play it let's do it yeah. you know let's make it fun so that is a pretty easy one and then you've got sneaky little goblins and yeah. this there's a surprise about this one this there may be a um, a little freebie about this at the end, but you know that's the sneaky little goblin telling you that. Yeah. What have you got about that one? Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I wrote something in the attic, I thought it's really cute, it's really nice, but it's way too long. I need something short, easy, simple, to the point. So this is kind of my answer to that. It's just a super simple little uh, one pager, little, little fun thing. And I had a little girl play this last year. She just adored it so um the shortness <laughs> i cannot tell you how hard it is when you teach young kids like i do and even some older kids yeah. their attention span is getting to be like a goldfish yeah. and to have them do a 32 measure piece in you know and try to memorize it or even just learn it for yeah. some kids that's just not gonna happen so this is a perfect piece 
for a lot of kids because it's just short and it's satisfying. Yeah. And, and it's written in C position and all of the accidentals are written in. So they don't have to remember a key signature, E flats written in, F sharp. Everything is right there. There's lots of finger numbers. So it makes it easy, uh, easy to read. So that was just a quickie that I could put out. Love it. Love it. Okay, I think we're getting to my favorite if I have to pick, you know, it's like your children picking a favorite. Darkest, coldest night. Yeah. Okay, I know this one is in D minor. Yes. And it has the key signature, right? Am I right? It about does. That? Yeah, this is for uh, early intermediate, maybe late elementary if they want to stretch piece. Um, there's a few eighth notes in there. That's why I say that. And we do move around a little bit. Um, I wrote this to go in my collection, Minor Moods, seven pieces with a flair for the dramatic. Um, that was new for me to try to put a collection together. I'd never done that before last year. And I needed, and I tried to do every song in a different minor key, you know, so I've C minor, D minor, E minor, F minor, uh, um, uh, Mad Dash is from that because it's an F minor. Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, I was looking for something dramatic and really spooky, but, you know, because I called it darkest, coldest night, it could be for winter, it could be any time. It's got lots of good phrasing, as you mentioned, and uh, did you want me to play a little bit of that? Yeah, play your little D minor scale first again, and then play yeah. a little bit, and yeah. So very dramatic. the right hand to have the melody and then look for the left hand to have the melody so the next page we're going to give left hand but we have a little embellished right hand with it and it just kind of ends with like we're going off into the distance so it's really cool yeah what a great way to teach the word motive you know yes. as you do that little part at the end and i i just love this piece going back to the d minor key signature mm -hmm. as a teacher i'm looking at it thinking a lot of my elementary students that haven't had a lot of experience with key signatures, this would be a piece I would pick as they have done a lot with maybe accidentals, as you mentioned with your other pieces. Mm -hmm. This is just a next kind of easy way to say, all right, we got to be flat. <laughs> Let's talk about that, you yes. know, because those are those are those things. But we don't have a lot of other stuff in that piece that is going to surprise us as right. teachers it's it's pretty straightforward um pedagogically so and the other thing i love about this so you use it for a fall recital but why not use it for like a contest piece or play it in a festival or reuse it in the spring um at another event why not you know absolutely yeah yeah it's, it's really it's a pretty one it's got lots to offer i think cool all right now i don't know much about haunted house horror other than seeing your very cool video um and now i'm doing private lessons i'm not teaching group piano but you recently did a video um with amy webster and you kind of explained how you can use a multi-level piece that you write so maybe you can kind of get in the weeds with that a little bit i'll link to that other video so you guys can can understand that with garage band and everything but if you're if you're someone like me maybe you teach private or maybe you don't know about multi-level pieces and you're a little freaked out by that you know you see that multi-level piece oh no well what can you say to us as teachers when we kind of have that freak out moment 
Yeah, yeah. So I teach just one at a time as well. This year, I'm starting to add ensembles to my studio, but it's not, uh, I don't teach group piano. So I know how you feel. Um, each one is a little bit different. And actually, I was introduced to this concept by Dorla Aprizio. She commissioned me to write a multi-level piece for her studio. And that's the first time I'd ever even heard of the concept, but I love it. I think it's really interesting. Um, Haunted House Horror is actually just four versions of solos that work together. So if you think of it this way, um, it's a studio license. You buy this, you buy the collection, and you've got an uh, um, an elementary student who you know only plays in the five finger position. They can do that. And then if you've got a student that says, well. Um, late elementary, I want to add some left hand. So it's it's the same solo, but a little bit harder. So in this one, you've got variations of the same solo, but they work together. Um, so that that's that's a cool aspect. This one I wanted to say real quick, it uses the whole tone scale. Which how many times do we use that? Not very much, but it um let me play just a little bit of the early intermediate because I really wanted the kids to get uh, used to that scale and it has augmented chords. So that makes it really Halloween-y, but uh, this is a little bit of early intermediate. of everybody's solo it has teacher notes or talking about what is a whole tone scale what are the different patterns that you can see uh where do you see the differences can you identify the augmented chord so it's, it's good for the student to read but the teacher can use that as a teaching point um i don't know i just wanted another interesting halloween song and this kind of sounded like it worked <laughs> It sounds fantastic. So you have, you buy the studio license and you have four versions. Yeah. So you can, it's kind of like having a book, a yes. collection with different levels. But yeah. if you, if you wanted to put them together and play together, you could do that. You just have a lot of options. And could yeah. you put perhaps like only two students together if you had just that maybe the elementary and maybe an intermediate student would that work absolutely yeah all of the parts go together and especially play you play with a backing track it's got some rappy kind of a beat to it that's that's the metronome yeah the uh absolutely all of the parts work together and the the elementary student won't be too overwhelmed because they just have mostly we love that little that's like knocking on the door same thing we're just going to different octave and then we just play the whole tone but in a five finger but it fits with that other part you see what i'm saying but they can play it as a solo along so mix and match lots of options however many keyboards you have knock yourself out <laughs> love it love that whole tone um idea because um that's on our theory test i think in grades eight or nine but often our our students don't experience it and it's really good to experience something in music before you have to go to a theory workbook or test and write about it so yeah, that's absolutely. a that's a great opportunity yeah. so you have a lot of pieces that people should know about and can you share how we can find your music and how to connect with you online oh sure 
Yeah, I've I've got my own website, uh, susanstaplesbellmusic.com. I'm really proud of that, if I can say I designed it myself. Um, it, that was really an interesting learning curve there. I've got a YouTube channel, just Susan Bell Music, uh, Sheet Music to Inspire or something to that way. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. That's new to me. I'm working on that. And uh, what else? Uh, I think I covered everything, but <laughs> all the things. And now I kind of want to make a distinction here because you have a lot of things on Sheet Music Plus, but let's just get in the weeds here. Yeah, it's perfectly fine to buy from Sheet Music Plus, but you're going to help Susan a lot more if you go to her site because that's just buying straight from her. However, there's some stuff because of copyright that is on Sheet Music Plus on your store. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, that's a really good uh, point. Uh, sh anything that is copyrighted, like pop, you're like Top Gun. I just did a multi-level uh, arrangement of Top Gun, and it's really cool, I have to say. But all of that stuff, Cruella, any Disney songs, anything Great Balls of Fire, any anything popular, Can't Stop Believing, that all has to live at Sheet Music Plus because it has a, 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 a copyright arrangement which, with Hal Leonard. And they have thousands and thousands of pieces that they allow people like me to arrange. And that's a fantastic deal. But when I do that, if you pay, you know, $5 for that, I get 10%. Mm. So I, you know, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. If I do it on my website, all my original and public domain pieces and my, most of my studio licenses of, of things like that are on my site to make it easier for the teacher. So yeah, and that's a really good point because we want creators and creative people to keep going. So we want to keep that um, keep that in mind as you're as you're shopping. And so we'll put all that links and stuff in the description. All right, we're gonna do a lightning round, Susan. Are you ready? Okay. I'm ready. Lightning round questions. This means you just gotta go quick, top of your head. Are Got you it. ready? I'm ready. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Sweet or salty? Salty. Classical or jazz? <laughs> no question there, jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, that's me too. <laughs> Best teacher you ever had? I, I think I have to go back to my band director in, in junior high. He was the first one that really opened my eyes that music can be fun and cool. He was an arranger. He wrote music for our band. And so I, I understood that they could be living composers. Um, and, and, and to pair with that, I have to say at the same time, I was studying jazz piano with a crusty old man that smoked a cigar. He was a famous jazz musician. Red Camp was his name. And um, anyway, he opened my eyes to chords and understanding why scales are important and putting that all together with lychee and improvisation. And so those, those two teachers, they were very influential in my life. All right, all you teachers that teach middle school, junior high kids, don't give up. Yes. <laughs> There's yes. hope. There's hope. Okay, favorite brand of piano? Oh, gosh, Yamaha. Uh, how many Yamahas do I have? Six, seven. Um, I just, this this is my brand new Yamaha P515. Pretty excited about that. I'm going to add this to my teaching studio. This is my office where I do all my writing and my marketing and things. I also have on the other side, you can't see it, a, a Yamaha P95. That's old. Behind me, I got a Yamaha Clambanova. And this is just in my working office. I've got a Yamaha six foot seven inch grand in my living room. In my teaching studio, I have a Yamaha studio upright and another Clambanova. So I, I love that. <laughs> you, you you have a little bit of a piano problem, <laughs> but well, it's a yeah. great problem to have. I yeah. I have three pianos. Moving them, I I gave one to my grandson, but it is hard. There, it, it's hard to part with them. I tell you, it yeah, is. Yeah. It, they all do something different for me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. can you hint about your next project? Well, I will. I let one slip earlier in the in the program here. Um, um, joy to the world for multi level piano, um, and and when I write for multi level, we just talked about that. But you can also have there's a there's an um, sorry intermediate solo, early intermediate duet, 
late elementary solo, and then an elementary solo or lead sheet. So you can buy all of those together or you can buy them separately. And so that's another reason I like working from this. So joy to the world. It's going to be, it's going to be really fun and jazzy. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Like that so real bouncy real i wanted it to be joyful and so um i haven't that's about as far as i've gotten with that so far <laughs> cool now if you're if your mind is blown like me when i think about these multi-level offerings um do you have like on the inside cover kind of like if we buy it can you kind of instruct us like here are the ways you use it and that kind of thing so if we I do forget, that yeah 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 some of those uh I, I what I do and I can't find one real fast on top of my head, but I have you got to know the score and it's a whole page of teachers notes that tell you, you know, what are you going to do with this, what are we learning in this, what are the things you can talk about when you're teaching, you know I love I'm such a teacher, I love to kind of lay that out for folks and it helps me think through why am I doing this and what do I want to accomplish, and then it helps the teacher to teach it yeah I have several pieces like that for improvisation or theory practices I have a, a zigzag jig for six, eight time and G minor that, that actually gets the kids to clap or stomp or, or, you know, make noise on the piano. Um, so that's a rhythm focused piece and it has a whole page of teacher's notes that talk about that. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much for that. Well, this, this has been super fun. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. So if you've made it this far in the video, this is your treat. Um, we have a freebie for you, but you have to act now because we're trying to be as fair to possible to everybody. So the first 25 people that do these two things are going to get a free copy of Sneaky Little Goblin. All and right. so if you want that freebie, you just have to do two very simple things. First, on this YouTube video or Facebook, whatever, you're going to comment Goblin. And second of all, you are going to go to Susan's website and you're going to put in the code teach piano, all caps, one word, teach piano, and you get your free copy. And what's your website again? susanstaplesbellmusic.com and uh what they'll do when they go to the website they'll find that piece of music and they'll say put it in the cart to purchase and when they get to the cart there's a little place for the code you write the code in and it tells you okay it's free and you ha i need your email so it kind of keeps track of who's buying what and stuff like that but yeah it's pretty easy to do cool we're all about the codes we can do yeah. that we can do that now this offer is good until august 21st 2022 so if you're watching this later sorry but check back because um i know there may be some other promotions in the future i know that susan also has a back to school sale mm -hmm. so if you want to take advantage of that this is also in august of 2022 it runs from now until august 27th and you're gonna again head to her website you only have to do one thing here head That's to her website yeah. Use the code school days, S C H O O L D A Y S, and you'll get um, a really good package. And we're all shopping for music now. I know I just sent, I'm teaching online, and I just sent like packets off to all of my kids. It's such a relief because now I, they have everything for the fall, and then they'll get to pick between all these things. Um, and I don't have to worry about sending them. So that has been fantastic. So that is so cool that we have seen all of these wonderful Halloween and fall pieces, but we want to end with some music too. So we're going to ask Susan to maybe play a little bit of something to end us out here. I think we'll go with Funky Gecko. Let me play Here we go.
you so super much as a teacher, as a new friend, as a pianist. I am super grateful to know you. Um, I just want to hang out with you again. <laughs> It'll be well, so fun because you're inspiring to me. But thanks. So we're going to sign off and say bye to everyone. And we will see you later around all the social media worlds. And thank you again, Susan. Thank you so much, Kay.